Jazz All Stars are a big hit. And we find out what is so shady about Shady Dog Records. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of News Center 16. I'm Tom Carl. And I'm Emily Hamill. We'll have those stories and more later in the show, but topping the Radnor beat this week. The AP exams have been administered this week at Radnor and will continue to be given all next week. These tests are standardized exams on specific subjects that give students the opportunity to earn college credit. Some of the tests that were given include the AP French, AP English, AP Art History, and AP Spanish. The tests are approximately three hours long, and the students are excused from regularly scheduled classes to take the test. We would like to wish all of those participating good luck. On May 1st, Radnor High School held the band and jazz concert in the high school auditorium. The concert consisted of many different segments, which included the outstanding performances from Radnor High School's concert band, jazz band, and symphonic band. The concert band started off the evening with Hymn and Fantasia, continuing with Seagate Overture. The jazz band performed six different pieces, including The Girl from Ipanema, which featured vocal soloist Shannon O'Neill. The symphonic band, last but not least, performed three different pieces, one of which featured the bassoon solo from Sam Dock. The night ended with At the Dawn They Slept, performed by the symphonic band. Everyone at the concert, both the audiences and the musicians, enjoyed the, the evening very much and are looking forward for the next concert. On May 2nd, Radnor High School's Fit for Life classes set out to Whitehaven, Pennsylvania to find out what teamwork is really all about. 26 students went on a whitewater rafting trip on the Lehigh River with teacher chaperones Becca Leave, Gilda Glass, and Dale Doner, the most experienced rafter with 28 years under his belt. Before heading out, the students spent a few days learning water safety and paddling techniques, which proved quite helpful on the Class 3 rapids of the Lehigh. Students wore wetsuits and packed lunches in plastic buckets, which were used as convenient tools in water fights. Fortunately, the water held out for this fun-filled trip, and students are excited for next year's excursion. Stay tuned. Sean Castro will be in next with this week's movie review. Hurry up. I don't want you to be late for school. Sudden weakness on one side of the body may be a signal that something is wrong. If one arm feels weak, reach out for help. Learn the warning signs of stroke. My hen is dancing in the farmyard. Grandpa, I like this story. I know you do, sweetheart. If you have a sudden loss of vision in one eye, she takes two steps forward. Look for help immediately. Learn the warning signs of stroke. Hunting safety isn't inherited. Appreciate your call yesterday. Well, appreciate you letting us hunt here, Mr. Brown. You have to teach it. For more information on Hunter Education in Delaware, call 1-800-648-7500. More than 140,000 Americans have joined Peace Corps. Returning home, their experiences last a lifetime. Peace Corps volunteers, changing America and changing the world. See how you can make a difference. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Hi, and welcome back to this week's edition of News Center 16. Sean Castor is now in with this week's movie review. Sean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, movie review. <laughs> I saw uh, Malibu's Most Wanted this week, and, and it, was, it was good. Uh, the acting was good, fair, poor, and, and it was... Uh, Sean, it was... just admit it. You didn't see that movie. Uh, no, but I did see X-Men 2. X-Men 2 was really good. Everybody should go see it because it was a really good movie, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Sean, that wasn't much of a movie review. Yeah, well, well, you're not much of an anchor. This is true. Last weekend, Wayne held its annual Wayne Murder Mystery. Participants searched local shops for clues to try to figure out who killed General Anthony Wayne. Clue sheets are picked up at the Mainline Print Shop, Daytona Lock Company, or the Wayne Business Association tent last Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. To receive a clue sheet, participants donated $5 that went to the WBA College Scholarship Award. The grand prize of 500 Wayne dollars and many other prizes were awarded at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Last Saturday, May 3rd, was an evening with the Philly Jazz All-Stars. Famous jazz musicians from all over the area, including Barbara Montgomery and John Blake, Jr., 
came and performed in the Radnor High School Auditorium. There were also performances by the Radnor High School and Radnor Middle School jazz bands. The entire night lasted three hours, and a good time was had by all who attended. Don't go away. Marshall Fleming will be in next with this week's sports. Chances are you know someone who's had a stroke. It's our nation's third leading cause of death. That's why it's important for you to know the warning signs. If you or someone close to you experiences sudden numbness on one side of the body, sudden loss of vision, or loss of speech, or trouble understanding others, seek help immediately. These people did just that. And they're among the three million Americans who are alive today after having a stroke. Amnesia? Last time oh. on Pueblo 81009. Arkham, remember using the spree cat to send for the spree in low-cost government publications? On saving money, getting federal benefits, staying healthy, and a catalog is free. Free? free? Information on educating our children? Send your name and address to New Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Don't forget, like Marco. Marco? Who's Marco? <laughs> Hi, this is Ned Jerry. On the speedway, slower cars are expected to make room for those with much greater speed. On the highway, you should always make way for emergency vehicles. When you see one coming, pull over to the curb or shoulder of the road until it's safely passed. Use your turn signal so other drivers will know what you're doing. Speed counts at a race and in an emergency. Please help them help you. This message from the Byrne Foundation, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hello and welcome back to this week's edition of News Center 16. Marshall Fleming is now in with this week's sports. Marshall? Thanks, Emily. In Radnor Sports this week, boys lacrosse won at Markle Newtown 12-6. Scott Cahill had four goals and an assist. Colin Cecchio had six goals and an assist. Andy German had two goals and four assists. Peter Drake had a goal, and Max Ritz had three assists. Radnor is now 13-2 overall and 6-1 and in the Central League. With two more wins, they will win the Central League. Girls lacrosse had three games this week. They had their first loss of the season at undefeated Episcopal, losing 11-5. However, they took their aggressions out on Marple Newtown, whooping them 16-3. In that game, Michelle Menzer had five goals, and Jesse Lieb, Laura Lindsay, and Ashley Brennan each had a hat trick. After a day of rest, the girls played their last home game of the season. Beforehand, they honored the graduating seniors with awards and a poem. They beat Strathaven 15-7. Laura Lindsay led scores with five, Jess Lieb had four, Michelle Menser had three, and Toby Rank, Libby Gill, and Becky Rank each had one. Radner's last, season, last regular season game is Tuesday night at Conestoga. If they win, they will end the season undefeated in the Central League. Now back to you, Tom. On Tuesday, May 13th, a special event will be held at Radnor High School to honor Jim Balk's five decades of coaching Radnor Varsity Baseball. A special day at the ballpark will take place at 3 p.m. All players from Radnor's team will be wearing Garrett Hill uniforms and hats, and Radnor baseball alums will be publicly introduced and given honorary uniforms. News Center 16, Sean Kasser, caught up with Jim Balk earlier this week to see out how he feels about this momentous event. Well, on May 13th, it'll be my last baseball game at Radnor High School, ending a 36-year baseball coaching career here, and that uh, former players are coming back to help, help me join in celebrating my last game, and as of now, we have 100 former players coming back, ranging from the class of 1969 to, uh, to last year's graduating class. And also, uh, as part of the celebration, uh, we're honoring a community of Radnor Garrett Hill, and all the Radnor baseball players playing in the game against Ridley will be wearing Garrett Hill uniforms. And the reason for that is not just that uh, this is one community that uh, is different from others, it's just that I was, I was uh, spent 16 years of my life living there. One of my sons was born there. And uh, Garrett Hill was one of those uh, unique communities where uh, white and black and rich and poor and Christian and Jew can all blend together and the community has made it work. Be sure to make it out to see Radnor versus Ridley and join the celebration of Jim Balk's career. This past Thursday, many Radnor residents were treated to a soul food dinner prepared by Radnor's Multicultural Student Association. For $8 that benefited the club, all who attended were treated to a buffet-style three-course meal. In attendance were many teachers, parents, 
students, and other people who heard about the event. The dinner lasted from 6 until 8, and there were prizes given out by the members of the MSA, and there were also songs celebrating African American heritage. The food and room was full of soul, as anyone there would say, and a good time was had by all. Last Monday, Spanish honor students were initiated into the Spanish National Honor Society. To be part of the society, students must maintain a B average in an honor Spanish course and promote Spanish language and culture. These exceptional students will be tutoring students who need academic help during their free periods. The ceremony was held in Spanish and was organized and run by the students themselves. Puertas, Radnor High School's chapter, includes 10 students with President Yen Shi in charge. Congratulations to these inductees on a wonderful achievement. This will surely be a great addition to the Radnor extracurricular programs. Hey Tom, have you ever been to Shady Dog Records in Wayne? Yeah, Emily, actually I have. Why do you ask? Well, Shady Dog Records is the business of the week. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Cutler, and this week I had the opportunity to swing by Shady Dog Record and Disc Exchange in Wayne and to interview owners Dave Castleman and Mike Notaro. Can you describe Shady Dog to us? Sure. It's a, a really unique place out here on this end of the main line. People are kind of surprised to find this store here. This is more typical of a store you'd probably find down in the South Street area. Um, in terms of the type of music we have here, it's incredibly eclectic. There's literally every type of music on the planet in this store. Uh, new aspect of the business are new and used DVDs. We're literally buying DVDs in here every day and that is going to be another aspect of our business that we're really into because we're both really into movies. What would you say is your favorite part of owning and running Shady Dog? If there's something new literally to deal with every day. I, I love music which is a big part of why I'm here. I've been doing this for almost 30 years for other people first and then I started our, our business like 10 years ago Mike and I started I was I was tired of going to record stores where the people working there were mean so I asked Dave who was my friend if he wanted to start one and uh, we figured we'd be like the record store guys that are nice guys and that's what we did and can you describe the website that you guys have for the store yeah yeah shadydog.com we've got about 10 12,000 records listed we ship worldwide I give descriptions of each record. Just a fun place to shop. If, if you're into music, this is a place to be. A Shaded Dog is a description of an RCA record label, okay? And it, specifically classical records that were made locally nearby in Camden in the 50s and 60s, which are considered collector's items by audiophiles all over the world. What do you think the name Shady Dog means? I have no idea. Be creative. Uh, well, you know, traditionally dog is kind of a kind of a slang term for man or dude, something like that. So perhaps these guys in here are all shady dogs. Reminds me of Snoop Dogg. <laughs> uh, I would guess that it would be some sort of a uh, dog with uh, he's a uh, kind of uh, on the underground and he's cool, and he's slick, and he sells all this music and it's all good. So, buy your CDs from a dog. So, be sure to check out Shady Dog Disc and Record Exchange the next time you're in Wayne. Elizabeth Cutler, New Center 16. Well, that just about wraps it up for this week's edition of New Center 16. For Sean, Marshall, Elizabeth, and all of us here at New Center 16, I'm Tom Carl. And I'm Emily Hamill. Be sure to join us next week for another edition of New Center 16. And happy Mother's Day!